So let's go through the solution to the practice question. We knew from the practice question that the actual observed offspring were as follows. So if we carry out a table just like we did before and we input the data, the interesting thing is that we have zero that are actually giving out the ebony body color and the sepia eyes. But what we might have expected would have been the nine to three to three to one ratio. So we would have done it as a proportion of 220. So we would have expected nine out of 16 of 220 to have been wild type and body and eye color. Three sixteenths would have been the two that had the dominant and the recessive traits in the minute, in the middle. And one sixteenth would have been the ebony body and the sepia eyes. So if you calculate those values, you get the expected values in the second row. From there, we can do observed minus expected. And then we can take that value and square it. After we square it, we have to divide it by the expected value. And in order to get our chi-squared value, we need to add all of that up. We need to sum it, everything on the bottom row. So our chi-squared value is 24.4928. Now our degrees of freedom, again, we had four categories. That's three degrees of freedom. And if we take a look at our table of values, that again gives us 7.815 as a critical value of chi-squared. So if we're going to conclude using this, we have 7.815 as our critical value, but 24.4928 is our calculated value. So since our calculated value is greater than the critical value, we would reject the null hypothesis this time. In this case, there is a significant difference between the observed and the expected values. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the traits for the body color and the eye color are actually linked. They are found on the same chromosome. That's what linked means. And therefore they do not undergo independent assortment during meiosis because they're on the same chromosome. They're inherited together.